Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 172 of the show. I'm Ramon Mejia, I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. And this week I have four new Lit RPG reviews just for you folks at home. Uh, that includes Elven Accord Apocalypse Gates, book number four, the author's cut. Um, also, uh, Code Hero Champion is playing book number two. It's the second book in that particular series. Uh, then after that, it is also going to be Web of Worlds, which is the fourth book in the Reality Bender series. And last, it'll be Reborn Apocalypse, a Lit RPG, Wuxia Story, Volume 1. But before we get into that, we're going to, of course, go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Little Virginia's, we're going to begin with a show about uh, Magic Dome Books. I'm in Vail over there, did a recent written interview with one of their most popular authors, Vasily Mihinko, author of the Way the Shaman series. Uh, they go into both the reasons for Vasily's popularity, um, his future series plans, you know, the stuff he's going to be writing in the near future, which is like, nice to hear about. Uh, and also that Vasily's currently wearing multiple hats, not just as an author, but also as an indie publisher of other people's work. So uh, it's actually quite an interesting read. So go check it out. We'll link in the show notes for you. Um, also, in Little Bit of News, we have Jeffrey Falcon Logue, who's not in any of these pictures, uh, but he does have a booth at uh, Momocon in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he'll be there from the 23rd to the 26th, which is when the when the con is. Uh, he's a booth and everything. So go in the if you're in the area, go <laughs> say hello, go, go go greet him, go check it out. Also, go support the guy on Kickstarter. He has a uh, Jeff Rockalog has also been producing and creating a uh, side scroller based upon a Slime Dungeon Chronicle series, uh, which is like super exciting. We've actually talked about it on the show a few times, uh, including like the trailers and also the uh, the the updated demos that he's been producing. Um, and so he finally put out a Kickstarter to help fund like the rest of the project. Um, so we'll have a link with the channels for you to go check it out. We already, of course, as the podcast contributed our fair share to help him make that dream come true. Uh, I'm, I'm a super big fan of anybody who is not only taking their creativity to authoring and writing, but also in creating like a video game. That's like the most meta circle of lit RPG ever. Little RPG novels are based on video games and Jeffrey Rock and Logan is basing his video game on his little RPG property. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's that, that complete circle, buddy. Good job. Uh, so I definitely want to support the guy. Link in the show notes for that as well. Okay, on to stuff that is out now. I haven't had a chance to read it, but it has come out this week, including Guardians of the Round Table, book number five, Crystal Mine. Uh, also out is Galen Wolf Short Story in the Dark World series he has, which is a um, kind of this Cthulhu RPG uh, s- series setting, which is kind of neat. It's a short story called Arkham Interlude. So it's kind of neat. Um, also out is Stellar Survival Quest. Um, and the Scorfear Alfram, book number two. Uh, it's such a weird title, but it's out as a, as a series. Um, this one's more of a sci-fi-ish uh, MMO kind of kind of setting. Um, also out is the second book in the God's Game series called The Labyrinth. And also is the Ink Resurrectionist Chronicle Ohm. A survival lit RPG series that is out as well. It's a very interesting um, cover. I feel like it's uh, pre-made cover art, but it you know don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> also out is Pantheon VR book number two in that series. So there you go. Um, new in lit RPG audiobooks, we have a couple of new lit RPG audiobooks out as well, including the first book in the Al Farmer series called The Volber. I uh, actually enjoyed that particular book as an ebook. Haven't listened to it as an audiobook though, but it is out for you to enjoy. Also out is Adapt, A Touch of Power, which is the second book in that series by Jay Boyce and also produced by the Magic Dome book, um, Mountain Dome Press. Mountain Dome Press, sorry. Uh, also out is the first book in the Champions is Playing series called True Hero. We're actually reviewing the second book uh, that came out recently. So it's, there you go. First book as an audiobook, second book as an ebook, out for you to enjoy. On to upcoming Lit RPG. This is just where I read up a bunch of stuff that I know is coming in the near future. So feel free to skip ahead, uh, but there are a few a couple of new novels uh, on the list. On May 31st, it'll be uh, Dungeon Eternium, The Divine Dungeon, book number five, which is unfortunately going to be the last book in that particular main series. Uh, The author, um, Dakota Kraut, and the head of Mountain Dole Press, has uh, said that he's actually going to be taking submissions for um, other stories from other authors set in the same universe. So the universe is going to continue, but this main series is probably going to end, unfortunately. Sad, sad, sad. Um, also out on June 1st is going to be Realm of Noria, Libby series book number two. 
on June the 1st as well is going to be Kingdom Come, a lit RPG Dragon Rider adventure, the Crimea Chronicles book number three. On June the 1st, there'll be Stars Awoken, a lit RPG apocalypse series, the System Apocalypse book number seven by Tao Wang. Excited to read that one. Uh, on June the 1st as well. There's a lot of stuff coming on June 1st, just letting you guys know. Uh, Steel Line, Hub World, Lit RPG book number three. Uh, also out on that same time, it'll be Dungeon World, book number two, Dungeon Core Experience. On June the 10th, finally something that's not June the 1st, it'll be Discardian, book number two, Apostles of the Sleeping Gods. They actually recently changed the cover art for this um, particular title, so if it doesn't look quite familiar, it's, that's the reason why. On June the 11th, it'll be Troll Nation, the Rogue Dungeon, book number three. On June the 13th, it'll be Home, Siege Home, the sixth book in the Good Guy series. June the 20th, it'll be City of Freedom, Animal Land, book number two. Uh, June the 20th, it'll be Gin Tamer, Evolution, the third book in that series. Uh, June the 25th, it'll be Shift, book number two. July the 18th, it'll be Time Master, Intro World Network, book number one. On uh, July 23rd, it'll be Cannibal, Demon of the Mind, a post-apocalypse survival liberty series. August the 5th will be the third book in the Champion is Playing series called Hero Go. Uh, the cover looks a little bit different, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, and that'll be it. So on to new releases and reviews. Okay, we're going to begin this week with Elven Accord Apocalypse Gates Author's Cut, book number four, written by Daniel Schienhofen. It is uh, 509 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. Meeting a dark elf was unexpected. Cora offered unconditional servitude in exchange for being saved, and Gothi was determined to make the most of it. Cora had a single request, to warn the queen that the king had broken their pact. Alvin agreed to take her to her role to report, wondering if it would be, be as easy as it sounded. Meanwhile, Kuro held up her end of the bargain, doing everything Gothi asked her of her. <laughs> Driving through the Svarvik Gate, what they saw before them was not what they expected. If what any of them expected, two armies at war with each other, one composed of the Queen's Dark Elves, the other of the Light King's Elves. Feeling his simple plan go out the window, Alvin decided to find out if the king's elves could be reasoned with. Realizing it would be more difficult than he thought, Alvin wondered if he could reach some sort of accord with either side. There we go. And there's a note saying the book contains adult situations in all of their horror and glory, including but not at limits to sex, abuse, drug use, murder. It also contains graphic sex scenes, which portray elements of BDSM and harem. You have been warned. So um, that is all very true, by the way. Um, this is This novel has sex scenes. Um, I skip them. I enjoy the rest of the story outside of that. Um, but some people don't. But this is also the fourth book in the series. So it has been a part of the series for pretty much from the beginning. Um, so just FYI, um, my particular view in the series, this is a good entry in the series. It continues with the slice of action action adventure. Um, this time the core group travels to another dimension where the elves live. The story has a little more of a fantasy background because of it. Uh, but it's the same enjoyable RPG progression, even though like there is again a no another update to the game system. Um, it's enjoyable if you've come this far in this series. Uh, by now, you've probably, hopefully, you've already decided whether you really like it or not. And the book's been doing well enough on Amazon that I think a lot of people actually are already showing that it, they they enjoy the novel quite a bit. Um, though, like normal, I have to warn you that there is graphic sex in the series, like multiple scenes. Like it's not like a tiny thing that's uh, fade to black or anything. It's it's rather graphic, so that's a part of the draw for some people. Other people are like me, I'm like, I just skip over it. It's very skippable stuff um, for me. Uh, so for me, I had to enjoy, uh, enjoy the novel. Um, score of 7.3 out of 10. Really simple, easy review. That's uh, Elven Accord, Apocalypse Gates, Author's Cup, book number four, with a score of 7.3 out of 10. And next we have Code Hero. Champion is playing book number two, written by... Um, you know, the, there are two titles here, Emma Vrion seven off. Um, but the actual Amazon title has, uh, has two authors names on there, which I want to make sure I give credit for, um, Anton Ilyov and Sergei seven off. So there we go. Those are the two authors there. Um, this is 344 pages, $3 99 cents. It is available on Kindle limited. Here's the author's description. Dan's first tournament may have ended, but life goes on. His luck is still with him in his regular life as well, and it seems to be endless. However, he is surrounded by very smart people, and surely one of them is going to start doubting his talents at least a bit. Especially now, 
with a new game about to start. The latest foes are even more dangerous than the last, and the rules are still unfamiliar to him. Dan wonders how reasonable the rules are in the first place. Is it really possible to take a competition that lasts a couple of hours at most seriously? A competition in which you are supposed to work together with simple monsters in order to destroy the enemy base. And so, the story of an ordinary Russian guy who suddenly found himself in the future continues. And another battle between his luck and the rest of the world is about to start. Who will come out on top? Okay, um... Yeah, that's a decent, I guess, description of the story. Um, if you like book one, you're probably going to like book two in the series. Since many of the same qualities went through it. Um, in book two, the main character continues to be uh, uh, at, at, at sometimes absurdly lucky, um, winning many of the MOBA-style matches by luck as much as strategy. Uh, you get the same multi-perspective narrative here with the reader seeing events on for the main character's point of view, uh, but also from his enemies and his allies. Uh, it's fun to see their views, events, and how they think he's a genius, and that uh, I think that's still a running gag in the story. Um, however, there's a late story twist that kind of lost me. I'm like, that comes out of a interesting place, maybe a little left fieldish. Um, it's not enough to like l- ruin the story, but it loses me a little bit. Uh, this is probably, I tr- kind of dropped it. I'm like, I'm not sure if I like this anymore, if I'm con- going to continue with the series. And I kind of ended up splitting the most saying, okay, I like, I enjoyed the st- most of the story I enjoyed. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with the series into book three, but this one is still fine. I think most of the earlier portions story kind of are just make up for it. And it's like, oh, it's it's good enough. It's really, it, it's enjoyable for the most part. And even the twist is a little odd. It's like I said, it doesn't ruin the story. It's just, oh, I hadn't expected that direction. I'm not sure where it's going to go in the future, if I'm going to be interested enough to continue on with it. Um, part of it is also the fact that I'm just not as big of a MOBA fan as I am RTSs. Book one in the series had more of an RTS vibe, real-time strategy. And in book two, the game system is, is definitely more MOBA driven. There's still like RPG mechanics of so like levels and stuff and, and getting items and, and abilities and whatnot. Um, but it's it's much more MOBA style of gaming. So if you're into that more, um, you're probably going to like this more. I've talked to a few people who are like, oh no, they're super jazzed and excited that the gaming and this is, is MOBA style. Um, I'm, and I'm just not as into that. So that's that's what it is. Uh, so for me, it gets a score of 7.1 out of 10. Um, that's Code Hero Champion is playing book number two with a score of 7.1 out of 10. And up next, we have Web of Worlds Reality Benders book number four, a little bitty series written by Michael Antonoff. It is 453 pages, $6.99. It is not available on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, here's the author's description. Ceasefires have one big downside. They eventually come to an end. And when they do, once again, game nodes are set ablaze and platoons of dark faction soldiers threaten our customer world with destruction. The enemy has grown stronger and more numerous. To make matters worse, they also got their hands on even deadlier weaponry. They have learned painful lessons from previous encounters and adjusted their tactics accordingly. What's more, the vast hordes of enemies are led by the greatest strategist of modern times and his mage advisors can see all possible futures, so they will always know just what to do. How can our world possibly stand up against such an enemy? Our only hope is the bravery and tenacity of our best fighters, those who'd rather die than surrender. Well, that and a starship captain, captain by one lone mage. Um, so that's, that's kind of a little, <laughs> a little of a snarky um, intricate you know, description of the novel. And that that definitely <laughs> reflects the author's uh, writing style personality uh, in, in the story of the main character. Um, this is, again, the fourth book in the series. You're either on board with it by now. Uh, most, of the, the, most of these reviews at this point are like, oh, did this series tank for some reason? And the answer is no. The, the story continues to be a good book in the series. It has um, the good spacefaring action adventure that you've come to enjoy from the last couple of books. Uh, the plot moves forward on the war with the Dark Faction with some actual um, resolutions there to some degree, some interesting twists, including some interesting real world um, effects of the war, I guess you could say. Uh, I won't want to spoil anything for you guys. Um, I read the story. I enjoyed it. I always really enjoyed this series just because it's one of the rare continuing sci-fi lit RPG stories uh, in existence. Like there's, there's a few, like there's a few, there's a lot of fantasy stories that are liberty. There are much fewer sci-fi stories and there are much even fewer continuing sci-fi liberty. Like there's a lot of book one entries, um, but this is one of the 
for me at least, uh, the one that continue on um, being impressively good and interesting and, and keeping interesting characters and RPG progression and all that good stuff. So I've always really enjoyed it. Uh, this one gets a score of 7.6 out of 10 for me. That's Web of Worlds Reality Benders book number four uh, with a score of 7.6 out of 10. And next we have Reborn Apocalypse, a lit RPG Wuxia story, volume one, written by L. M. Kerr. It is a mass of 692 pages. It is $4.95 that is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. If you could turn back the clock and fix all the mistakes you've ever made, would you? From the author of the award-winning web novel Reborn, Evolving from Nothing, comes the tale of Michael Kerr, a swordman that can only be considered a middling warrior in humanity's last army. <clears throat> Michael's answer to that question would be quite simple. Yes, a million times yes. Humanity has fallen, killed by stronger races of beings after being warped away into a new reality, the mystical seven layers. Humanity's goal has been simple. Make it through all seven layers and reach heaven. Humanity failed. Humanity died. Michael Kerr's memories have been transported back into his past self thanks to a magical artifact he found by chance. He is no divine chosen hero. He is no divinely picked hero. Can he change the future? Can he catch up the mightiest warriors of humanity and surpass them? So there we go. Um, this is a story that has actually a pretty big following online where there are many more chapters of the story than there are in this first volume. Again, this is essentially a serialized story online that's been collected, edited, and polished for, for production on Amazon. So... Uh, the story is as much of an ending as it has like a place it's stopping because this series does continue on. And the author has said he does plan to um, continue on publishing um, them on Amazon. So you, or you can go online and read the, the continuation of the series. Um, this story is actually really similar to uh, towers of heaven. Uh, if you've read that series of uh, novel, rather it's particularly popular recently. Um, it's similar to that one in both premise and basic content. It's not a copy or anything, um, but they both use a very common setup of humanity failing sometime in the future to superior forces and the main character traveling back in time and using his foreknowledge of events to become overpowered um, as he tries to save humanity. So that's the setup. They've had the same setup and it's actually fairly, fairly common. It's a very common setup for these kind of works. Yeah. Um, type of stories. Um, both series also have RPG apocalypse settings where the people fight more powerful monsters as they ascend levels with the ultimate goal of beating the big bad guys at the very top to save humanity. However, aside from that premise, the stories diverge. Like they're very different. Reborn apocalypse um, has an original story, has original dungeon levels. Um, and in particular, the way that the story differentiates itself from others like it, with a similar premise, I should say, is that it uses a point-driven RPG system to advance character progression where they can buy a variety of fantasy and sci-fi powers uh, from a system store. Um, the story also leans a little more towards Wuxia cultivation uh, for the main character's power set in particular, um, which is going to be fun for some people. Um, I, I liked it. Um, I actually liked the progression mechanics in this story a little bit more, to be honest. Uh, it's actually it's, it's a lot more detailed. It's a lot more thought-driven about, oh, this is what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it and how I'm planning it out. And I think the author in this one uses his foreknowledge a little bit better about, oh, uh, uh, and taking advantage of things. And for some people it might be a little annoying that you, the main character already know so much. Uh, but for me, it was, it was well done enough. Like this entire novel, even though it's 692 pages, felt a lot shorter because there's so much action. The story itself is very action oriented. It's really fun. It's, it's kind of a slice of life adventuring kind of story just because of the nature of the original project, which is getting an online serial story. Um, so you have to be okay with that. If you're going to enjoy the novel, uh, there is, there's definitely a, a kind of a plot arc ish kind of thing here. There, there's, there's a, some things that off the main character does, and there's definitely a big bad guy to find it at some point. Um, so it has, it has a decent arc, but it's, you, you can tell like, it, you, you can tell it's a, it's an, it's a serialized story. Um, but for me, I had a good time with it. There's good monster fighting, good cultivation. There's an OP main character, an RPG apocalypse. And I actually really liked the, um, point driven system. Uh, it, instead of using experience points, be essentially, um, fight monsters, get the points for killing them or the players and use those to invest in either, um, in, in buying either items or like powers from the system store. So it's kind of a neat thing. I liked it, uh, combined a bunch of different things I enjoyed, especially this first like level in this novel. 
Um, for me, I had a good time with it. It gets a score of 7.8 out of 10. It was almost an 8 for me. It just wasn't as original setting as I was hoping. It didn't really bring anything too new as, a, as much as it was combining things I already enjoyed. Um, and it, but it did well. Um, again, good action stuff. That was probably the biggest draw for me. Uh, it had really good pacing, so it was enjoyable. Uh, it, again, that's Reborn Apocalypse, a lit RPG Wuxia Story Volume 1 uh, with a really good score of 7.8 out of 10. And that's it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening, for watching, uh, for taking the time to hang out with us. Um, you remember, you can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our webpage at littlerpgpodcast.com if you want to get the most up-to-date uh, Little RPG news, reviews, and author interviews. And, of course, we have a huge database of all the reviews we've done in the past like several years and hundreds and hundreds of reviews um, where we try to help you find the things that you enjoy by tagging them with uh, all kinds of great fun tags like Dungeon Core female protagonist, female author, or um, dungeon dive, and any, any kind of tags you can think of where you kind of helps you find the things you like. So definitely go check that out. Um, if you, of course, want to support the podcast in any way, shape, or form, you can find out all the ways to do so at litrpgpodcast.com slash support. But again, um, thanks for hanging out with me today. And until we can hang out again, ladies and gentlemen, remember to go read some Lit RPG. Goodbye, everybody.